All right, in this video tutorial, I will show you how to modeling with the vertices and the edges. And uh, I'll sh also show you bevel and uh, extrude. So we will um, create uh, this uh, cafe table first. Um, and uh, you can find the download link for the reference images below. And followed by that, we'll uh, create this uh, TV model. And then I'll leave the, th uh, the third one, third uh, model for you as a small assignment. And uh, uh, in the folder you can download, I have uh, uh, the first two models finished um, as a reference. And uh, also have a notes folder uh, that uh, shows you uh, the key steps okay, of my demonstration. Um, and with the images, you can see the settings I've used and uh, also my notes regarding the key steps. Okay, so feel free to download all of the files through the link I posted below. And uh, let's get started. So we'll create uh, this uh, cafe model first, cafe table model. Okay, so as you can see on the top, it got a square shape, but uh, it's rounded on the edge. So my thoughts is I will start with a cube and uh, I would expand it and um, expand it on X and uh, Z axis. And then I would apply a command which is called the bevel to bevel the th uh, four corner of the table to round it a little bit. And for here, I would I would do a cylinder and then here are the second cylinder. For the second cylinder, I just uh, scratch it. Or I can just uh, create one cylinder and then use the extrude uh, extrude from center and extrude it out. So this whole part will be one object. Okay, so either way works. Uh, let's get started. So again, we'll use um, polygon primitive, and uh, I will start with uh, with a uh, polygon primitive a cube. And uh, uh, in my few uh, in my last a few tutorials, I showed you once you started a basic object, you can go to input. And uh, you can change these numbers um, to change the dimension. Okay, so here we'll just use a scale tool, which is R key R, uh, or you can just go to the tool menu here, the sixth one. And uh, instead of uh, scaling up from each individual attribute, what I would do is I would just click on this um, bottom plane, which Z axis and the X axis is sitting on. So I just grab this plan, um, so I'll be able to expand it. Um, so once I get this stage, I can think about the side, the side edges. Okay. So I will select the edge. In the edge selection mode, if you just use your mouse right button, click, click and hold it, and then select edge, and then you will be able to select individual edges. So let's uh, just uh, do it on one side as example. Okay, for example, if I select this edge, and then I go to um, Edit Mesh, and the second one you will find Bevel, and this time we'll have to go to this Option Box here on the right. Option Box, and here's the setting. Okay. So for the segments, it is basically how smooth you want it to be. So if I put two, I will subdivide this by two. If I do five, I will have five edges here to bevel it. And uh, basically, the the width is if I do if I do uh, one. Basically, it'll take this whole space to smooth it out. So it'll be a curve. If I do uh, point five, and then it'll come from here. The center point of uh, the left edge and the center point of the right edge and then take this space to bevel. Okay, so let's take a look of it. If I do one segment and uh, 0.5 as a width and if I do apply, here is it. As you can see, here's the center point of this edge and here's another side. So if I go back, if I do three and I do apply, and you can see it still goes from here, the center point, to another side of the center point, and then um, it divided by three segments. Okay, so this is what the segments do here. Okay, 
So you can put more. I can do maybe eight. And for the width, I can do, oh wait, before we move forward, I will uh, go back. Okay, so maybe you can do eight. And for the width, I will just do a point two. So it can be really tight. Just uh, two tenths of this length and two tenths of this length. So it will be some something around here, around here, and then it will smooth it out. Uh, let's apply. Here is it. All right, I really like it. And then you can select, hold on shift, and uh, select all the uh, three remaining colors. And uh, you can apply it. Okay, and you can see that once you apply the tool, you will also have this uh, uh, small box pumped up. So um, you, if you are not satisfied with the result, you are already applied, and uh, you can change it here. For example, the fra uh, fraction, which is the width. So I just did 0.2, which is uh, 2 tenths of this length. So if you want to be longer, and uh, you can just increase it. See, once I increase it, how it looks. Right, so it made this side as a round shape. Let me close this thing, since I don't need it anymore. So this is one, and if you think it's too big, and you can make it smaller, right? And uh, segments, if you want fewer segments, and you can do it here, or if you want more, you can increase it, right? Um, or if you want to push it in instead of pump it up. Okay, so really, there's a lot of things you can do um, to get uh, the final result you want. All right, so here I just want it to be equal as the original uh, thing I did on this side. Okay, so this is the top of the table, and we just used um, bevel tool. Okay, so I'll move it up, move it up, and then for the bottom, let's start with a uh, with a cylinder. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do is I would uh, push it in, make it thinner, and then instead of uh, grab this individual attribute, I would just grab from the center point. I make it bigger, and then I want to do the second method as I mentioned earlier. I said the first method you can just create uh, two cylinders, and uh, this one you just make it longer. This one you just make it thinner. Uh, then you will finish it. Um, but no, I want to keep both of these two parts as one object. So what I would do is I would start with this cylinder, uh, scratch it, make it uh, uh, very flat. And then what I would do is I would go to a face selection mode and um, select all of the faces on the top. So while you are selecting the faces, make sure you're not accidentally select any faces on the side or on the bottom, or you know you all make it in the wrong way. All right. So if you accidentally select it, just go Command Z to go back. All right. So I would add, hold on Shift, and add the selection. You also selected all of the faces on the top and do a final check before you go forward. See, now I only select the faces on the top. Okay, here let me show you another way. So instead of uh, go select each individual faces, what you can do is you can go to uh, the front view or the side view, either one works. And uh, make sure you're in the face select mode. Grab and select all of the faces here on the side and on the top. And then in the perspective view, you can see I selected all the faces on the side, on the top, except on the bottom. So go back to side view. So after I made that selection, and then you can hold on um, control key. So once you hold on control key, see what have changed on the cursor. Uh, it add a minus key, right? So that means now I will deselect faces. So with the minus selection tool, you can you know deselect individual faces or hold on it and uh, grab all of the faces on the side so eventually you will only have the faces on the top so like it. see that's fast let me show you again so you can um, select all the faces here and then hold on control and deselect the faces on the side so you will have uh, these faces remain selection the top faces and then we'll go to edit, fa uh, edit mesh and we'll do extrude. Okay, so just apply. But oh wait, before you apply, go to here the setting box. 
make sure you go to edit and uh, reset setting. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you work in uh, the computer lab or on your personal computer. If you work in the lab, other people may have changed these settings, and uh, I don't want you know you get confused because of those settings. All right. So I just uh, go to edit and reset setting, and then uh, do apply, and let me move this out. Um, and then nothing have changed, but you can see that I actually I extruded a actual faces. So let me go command Z to go back one step. All right. So after I extruded, I can play with these numbers. This is a small interactive um, box, and you can change the thickness. If I change the thickness, make it thicker. Um, I push it out. Uh, go back. Uh, and or I can change the offset. So this is what I want to do. So I want to push actually scale down this face, scale it down, and I can make the neck for it. Maybe something like this. All right. Uh, so this is the first thing I will do, and uh, and uh, I would like to use the same tool extrude face option. So um, you can go to top menu extrude um, sorry edit mesh and extrude again. And this time I want to do thickness because I want to actually bring it up. Okay, so just keep adding values. So if you put, put your cursor on the thickness and click on that and hold in your mouse and bring it to the right, you will add value, bring it to the left, you will uh, decrease the value. So get to the point where um, the two faces overlap with each other. Okay, so now I get a, um, this is stand. And if you want some subdivisions in between, you can add divisions. By default, it's one, so that means there's no subdivision at all in the center. So you can just add value, and as you can see, when you when I add four, basically it will divide. Um, um, you will you will divide this space to four pieces. Okay, let me move it out so you can see it. Right, one, two, three, four. Okay, so basically you need to add three. Edge loops to divide, uh, equally divide this and then to four pieces. Okay, so that would finish our first thing. See, here is a thinner. So what I would do is when I you know shrink down that center face, I, I can just go more to make it thinner. That's it.